Here's the deal, Stinkpots. We started off with some nice simple rules about how you take antiderivatives of simple looking functions, and then we were like, all right, that's not so bad. But now here's this u substitution thing, and that tells you how you can take antiderivatives of more complicated looking crap. And you're like, all right, well, that's cool, I guess. But then with 7.4, we were all, yo, here's how you can find more antiderivatives using this thing called um, integ integration by parts or something, and then people's heads explode. So here's the thing. This video is going to be a little tutorial about how you use what techniques and when. So let's get cracking. P.S. This thing that says an illustrated tutorial is a lie. I drew exactly zero illustrations. Suck it, nerds. Now, moving on. So, dudes, here is the basic crap you have to know. Three different things. First, we got basic rules. Second, we got use substitution. And third, integration by parts. These are the three categories of things you need to know, and everything underneath here is the details you need to know about them. We only have three basic rules, and those are how you integrate a variable raised to a fixed number power, how you integrate a number raised to a variable power, and then how you integrate the special case 1 over x. Those are the three dudes that we have for our basic rules. And dudes, this is an important thing I'm about to tell you right now, so listen up. The basic rules are the only ways that we have of actually getting rid of the integral sign. So for example, the fact that if you take like the integral of x squared is 1 third x cubed. Um, and actually, dudes, when we write that, we even technically should have like a dx there. Integral of x squared dx is 1 third x cubed plus c, if you like. The fact that we actually have something with an integral sign and a dx in the question, and then in the answer, we've gotten rid of those two things. We actually literally took the integral to do that. When I say take the integral, that means get rid of the integral sign, get rid of the dx, actually give me a function. And the basic rules that we have, those are the only things that do that. U substitution doesn't do that. Integration by parts doesn't do that. All those things do is they set up the problem so that you can use a basic rule. That's how those guys work. So in the end, it all comes down to the basic rules, and those are the only things that you can use to actually take the integral. Now we've got these two other techniques, u substitution and integration by parts. Those guys take a complicated looking integral, and if you use them right, they set it up so that you can transform the complicated crap into simple crap. Once you have the simple crap, it's still an integral, but you can just use one of the basic rules to figure out what the antiderivative is. All right, and dudes, um, I'm going to assume you know how u-substitution and integration by parts work. If not, you should go back and review those guys. But this is the list of all the stuff you need to know for simple integrals or antiderivatives of any sort. Now, uh, just because you know those things doesn't mean you necessarily know the right way to use them. So let's talk about that. Here we got this thing called steps. And what I mean by steps is if you see an antiderivative or integral problem, these are the steps that should go through your stinky, stinky meat brains as you solve this puppy. So step number one says, uh, first see if you can write it in the form where you can use a basic rule. Dudes, if you see something that looks like integral of x squared dx, hopefully that's not a big deal and your brain is just like, yeah, no biggie, one third x cubed, ha, <laughs> duh. Good. But you need to be able to think the same thing if you see something like the integral of 1 over x squared, or even something like the integral of 1 over the cube root of x, because those guys still use the exact same simple rule. You just have to rewrite them so that it's obvious how you use that rule. For example, as you probably know, if you see the integral of 1 over x squared, you should write that as the integral of x to the minus 2. Now that it looks like x raised to a number power, you can go ahead and say that that integral is equal to, using a basic rule, 1 over negative 1 x to the negative 1 power plus c. That's all coming from the fact that all we did from going from here to here is use algebra to rewrite it. But once we go from here to here, we actually used one of the basic formulas for integrals to figure out what the integral is. Notice that here we've got an integral sign and a dx. Over here we don't because we actually found what the integral is equal to. So dudes, the step number one is mostly important for stuff like 1 over x squared or the cube root of x or crap like that. Um, all right, now dudes, if one doesn't work, if you've got stuff that's too complicated for one to, to save the day for you, then you're going to try u substitution. And that's because u substitution is the easiest between u sub and integration by parts. Integration by parts is a little bit more of a pain in the ass. So you're going to try u substitution, and dudes, just like it says up above, let's uh, review this important fact. If you're doing u substitution, you're going to look for one of two things. Either there's going to be a piece of the function that you're integrating that has an inside, or you're going to see a piece whose derivative is also in the equation. 
And so dudes, just to remind you, um, if you're looking at a function where there's an inside, it might be something like integral of x times e to the x squared. Notice that we actually have an inside here, and that inside is the x squared part. So that's the inside. But dudes, you can also have one where you have like uh, the derivative piece. Derivative piece. Let's say you have something like the integral of natural log of x over x. Turns out this is a great use substitution problem, but it doesn't look like it because there's no inside to this. All we have is a fraction and there's no real composition going on. But dudes, it turns out that the derivative of ln is 1 over x, and so the right thing to do is to set u equal to ln of x. So that's what the second rule right down here says. If you can see a piece whose derivative is also in the equation, that should be your u. And so in this problem that we see right here, ln is a piece where the derivative of ln, 1 over x, is also inside the integral. So that's a good candidate for u substitution. All right, let me erase that crap because it's all clutter up my view. Can't have my view getting cluttered up. Ain't right. Ain't right. No, sir. No, how. I've got to. Eh. Okay, feel good about that. All right, so dudes, that's trying u substitution. But if that doesn't work, give integration by parts a shot. And the way you know how to use integration by parts is that you will see two different pieces of the equation where you can separate one piece into, you know, you'll call that u. Another piece will be your dv. And then, dudes, the whole point is that when you take the derivative of u and the antiderivative of dv, then you get something that should be simpler. So over here on the left, you have u dv. Over here on the right, you have v du. So to go from your dv to v, you had to integrate. To go from your u to du, you had to take the derivative. And the whole point is that that should have made the whole problem simpler somehow. A common thing that you're going to use integration by parts with is something like the integral of, I don't know, um, I think you've seen this one before, x times e to the x. The reason why integration by parts makes this easy is because if you take derivatives of this piece, it gets easier. And if you take integrals of this piece, well, it doesn't get easier, but at least it doesn't get any harder. So when you apply integration by parts to this sucker right here, as long as you pick the correct u and dv, then your life becomes much, much simpler. You know what I say? Yes, you do. All right, so dudes, that's integration by parts. And then the last thing is, when you are trying to take these complicated as integrals, make sure you know when you actually take the integral. And all I mean by that is, if you see something that looks like um, integral of x squared dx, then know that when you use the basic rule, you get 1 third x cubed plus c, no more integral, and also no more dx. Because that's what the three basic integral rules do, is they tell you how you can transform the integral of an equation into the actual answer. And then kind of the exact same way, dudes, if you're doing u substitution, let's say you have something like the integral of 2x times e to the x squared dx. Well, when you go through your u substitution, you'll end up with the, uh, you know, let's kind of do this in fast speed. You would pick u equals x squared, du equals 2x dx. Solve for dx, and you get dx equals du over 2x. Um, that looks pretty cool, I guess. Plug all your stuff in, and this becomes the integral of 2x e to the u du over 2x. 2x is cancel. You get integral e to the u du. And now, dudes, now, exactly here, this is where you actually take the integral. Everything that we've done up to this point has just been substituting stuff in, setting up the integral, making things look a little bit nicer. But now that we're at this point, it's a simple integral. We can use one of our integral rules to say that this is just equal to e to the u plus c. The integral sign and the du have gone away. At that point, we have taken the integral. So it's important to know when that step happens. And then, of course, because this is a u substitution problem, you finish up by plugging back in for u, and the answer ends up being e to the x squared plus c. All right, dudes, that's it for this video. Toodles.